So let me just lay it out here as bluntly as I can. Uh, you will never be able to transfer your consciousness to a machine. The computers will never be conscious. They may be able to simulate consciousness or simulate intelligence, but there's a reason why it's called artificial intelligence, because it is artificial, it is not natural. And uh, machines cannot have consciousness for the simple reason that consciousness is not material. One of the great mistakes that people make today in talking about the ability to transfer consciousness to machines or to, quote, upload yourself into a computer, they're basing that on this false premise that consciousness is material. Uh, and they're completely wrong about that point. Uh, they think that the brain creates the artifact of apparent consciousness, which they believe is an illusion. And they think that this illusion springs forth automatically from a tipping point of neurological complexity. Uh, in other words, that if you build a complex enough neural network system, they think that the illusion of consciousness will be projected from that in uh, an apparent self-realized reality or an experiential reality that the entity will perceive as consciousness. But these scientists think that that is an artifact and not, not a real thing that's happening. And they, they then believe that if they can achieve consciousness in an artificial construct in a, in a computer system, that they can somehow transfer human consciousness into the computer's consciousness and in effect download a human being into a machine uh, from which you could, I guess, live forever, <laughs> which has its own price. But let's, let's back up on all of this. Hold on a second. Uh, consciousness is not material. And this, this is a fundamental starting point where we've got to correct the materialists. And the best way to explain this is to understand that the, the brain is a physical organ, but the brain is actually not the place from which your spirit, your consciousness, and your free will emanates. The brain is actually an interface, and it is a, a biological system that interfaces with a non-physical consciousness part of your being, which is above the physical and biochemical level of your existence. So you have different levels of existence. You have a, a physical body, you have a biochemical body, you have an energetic body, and you have a, a spiritual body. Your spiritual being interfaces with your physical brain. And this is why we are not deterministic biological robots. Because if you were nothing but a physical being, and, and there, was, there was no spirit, there was no consciousness, then the chemistry of your brain would have to follow the laws of cause and effect. But I also understand that there is a non-physical part of you that cannot be weighed, it cannot be measured by today's scientific instruments. It's not affected by gravity, for example, or wind, or solar radiation. It is a, a, a bulletproof spirit, if you will. It can't even be destroyed by destroying your body. The spirit is eternal, and the spirit is simply projected into and through this current biological system that you inhabit, which includes your brain and your body and your heart and you know all the organs and all the blood and all the cells that you will eventually one day surrender back to the earth, by the way. Uh, you are simply expressing your spirit, your free will, your consciousness through the body that you currently occupy on a very temporary basis. So the brain has a function and that is to interpret or in effect express or translate would be a better term, the intentions of your non-physical spirit uh, to translate those into the biological system that you currently inhabit. So through your intention as the originating source of cause, uh, your brain translates that non-material cause into uh, biochemistry signals that then uh, accomplish whatever you are attempting to do with your intention, which could be speaking as I'm doing now, or, or observing the world around you, simply uh, looking and seeing and hearing all takes intention and some degree of effort. And it is an expression of, of what your spirit desires your body to be doing at that moment.
The reason this is not intuitive for people to understand is because from a sensory experience point of view, it feels like you are inside your skull. It feels like you exist as something mysterious, perhaps behind your eyeballs or inside your ears or inside your skull. There is this long-standing idea in materialism that the person exists as some a really mysterious entity that is physically located in the brain. And if only they could locate the right part of the brain, that is the consciousness part, then they could solve the mystery of consciousness and they could put to bed forever this idea that there is a non-physical material part of you that exists beyond the physical body. But as much as scientists have tried to locate the physical parts of the brain that are tied to consciousness, they have repeatedly failed to the great astonishment of scientists. You can take lab rats and you can teach them remarkable skills, uh, how to navigate mazes and how to work levers and get rewards and so on, and uh, solve puzzles actually. And then you can surgically remove 95% of the brains of those lab rats and you can return them back to, to, the, to the maze or to the uh, puzzle and they will solve it. Uh, you've removed the brain almost entirely, and yet they're, they're, they still remember the skills and they, they are still able to function because they, they learned something that was encoded beyond their neurology. The brain is, is not a memory storage chip that just happens to be biological. It's much more than that. The brain is actually back translating your experience to your spirit. You see, it, it's a two-way street. When you are uh, exercising in intention and wanting to do something, your intention is calling upon your brain to translate intention into the chemistry of the brain that controls the motor neurons and controls your musculoskeletal system and so on. But it also works the other way. When you observe something, experience something, or learn something, your brain back translates that into patterns of learning that go all the way back up to your spiritual self. Uh, in other words, your spiritual self, your, your spirit, your consciousness can learn things and encode things and remember things that are not in any way dependent on the intactness of your physical brain to be able to recall and reproduce. The, the whole theory of memory being a, a material thing that is stored in a specific location of the brain has been proven false over and over again. Uh, memory is not located in the brain. There is not a filing system in the physical brain because you can teach people skills and they can remember them and learn them and exercise them even when they have very little brain matter to begin with. There are fully functioning adults in society who have been discovered to have never really developed brains. They have a very thin layer of nerve cells uh, in the inner lining of their skull, uh, and that's it. They, they, they act, literally, they have no brain, and yet they, they function just like everyone else. They're not retarded, they're not cognitively impaired. They are very successful members of society. This is actually more common than you might imagine. Uh, and this, this has baffled scientists for a very long time. Uh, they think that the brain uh, stores memories in a physical way and then somehow through some uh, magic that they can never really explain uh, somehow the brain recalls selected memories uh, on on demand well if you think about it how how could a brain do that unless there was an indexing system so to speak that that indexed everything that you had ever experienced every sensory input in the the history of your entire life that indexing system would have to exist somewhere in the brain a uh, filing system, you'd have to, I guess, open that file, metaphorically speaking, and find the index to go retrieve the memory to bring it into your brain at that moment so that you could re-experience that memory, right? Well, if that, if that indexing system exists in your brain, then how do you know which index card to go to in that indexing system? You'd have to have another indexing system to index the index. And as you can see, this becomes very quickly a, a problem in cognitive recursion. You can't have an index of an index of an index of an index of a physical memory uh, because the physical space inside your skull is insufficient. 
to have this uh, never-ending series of recursive indices. So that doesn't work. Uh, memory is non-material, as is spirit, as is consciousness, as is free will. It's all non-material. Even if you could scan every, every nerve cell in your brain and, and recreate that exact scan, the exact biology, the exact configuration of nerve cells in some other system, that system would not be you because the spirit is missing, because it's incomplete. It is not a being. It is simply now a copy of dead biology. There is a robot in this formation that does not belong. Identify it. One of us. Which one? One of us. Now, none of this means that computer scientists can't create a, a very persuasive mimics of, of consciousness. Uh, artificial intelligence is real, uh, and it is artificial and they're getting very, very good at it. And before long, they will have uh, systems that will be able to trick you into thinking that they are human. And there's nothing magical about that. It's just, it's just really complex language parsing and speech reproduction and, and speech recognition and so on. Uh, that is not very amazing. Uh, in, in fact, it's, it's, it's quite boring in, in, in a sense. Um, and it's not consciousness but it is dangerous. Uh, artificial intelligence, just because it's artificial, doesn't mean that it doesn't pose a very real risk to the future of humanity. They have the illusion of, of free will. They have the illusion of being human. They have the illusion of perhaps even you. You know, they can build AI systems that will study your language and your speaking and your words that you've written and perhaps your photos and videos, and they can create a, a simulation of you. Perhaps one day they'll create a simulation of me. And there's, there can be an AI system that can talk like I'm talking, and it can be convincing to many people, but it's not me. There is no system that can be you. And so all of these computer scientists who are promising that you can download yourself into a computer system, uh, they're espousing a pipe dream, and they're chasing the wrong thing. What they should be focusing on, in my view, is not trying to live forever in a, a biological or a silicon system. They should be focusing on expanding their consciousness because the consciousness lives beyond this body and whatever work you do on your consciousness in this lifetime uh, carries with you after this life. Uh, in fact, it is, it is the, the understanding, the introspection of consciousness that is perhaps the most important life's work that you can pursue as you inhabit this very temporary biological body. Uh, those who are really spiritually advanced understand that the truth is found within because what is within is also connected to the divine. But those who don't believe in consciousness or spirit or divinity are preoccupied with trying to find uh, truth and immortality uh, through external sources. They think that they, if they can build a complex enough machine, a computer, an android with a, with a neural network brain that they can then perhaps uh, um, express their true selves for eternity through that artificial system. It is a, a fool's journey. You will never find yourself in a machine because you are not made from machines. You are divine. If you'd like to help support this video and other videos like this, visit healthrangerstore.com, where everything we sell is laboratory tested for heavy metals and more. You'll find superfoods, storable survival foods, nutritional supplements, and a full line of synthetic chemical-free body soaps, shampoos, and oral care products. Everything we sell is non-GMO, and it's all completely free of chemical sweeteners, artificial colors, hydrogenated oils, and other toxic ingredients that you want to avoid. Find all this and much more at healthrangerstore.com.